Every citizen is guaranteed their right to an attorney and can, cannot be compelled to provide a statement. The detectives determined probable cause existed to issue a citation to Greg Gianforte for misdemeanor assault. The state of Montana has two assault charges. Assault. A person commits the offense of assault if the person purposely or knowingly causes bodily injury to another. This is a misdemeanor. Aggravated assault. A person commits the offense of aggravated assault if the person knowingly, purposely or knowingly causes serious bodily injury to another or purposely or knowingly with the use of physical force of contact causes reasonable apprehension of serious bodily injury or death in another. This is a felony. Serious bodily injury is defined in Montana state statute as bodily injury that involves a substantial risk of death, extreme physical pain, protracted and obvious disfigurement, or protracted impairment of the function of or loss of a bodily member, organ, or mental facility. Faculty, excuse me. In this case, the victim did not sustain serious bodily injury as defined by the Montana state statute, nor did he communicate reasonable apprehension of serious bodily injury at any time during the investigation. Reasonable apprehension is determined throughout the course of an investigation. This is the reason why law enforcement conducts investigations without jumping to conclusions. There is no existing circumstance that, circumstance that required immediate arrest, no threat to the public safety, no further threat to the victim, and the suspect was not a flight risk. Our deputies frequently investigate incidents similar to this. Based on the facts gathered during the investigation through interviews and collection of evidence, probable cause existed to issue a notice to appear to Greg Gianforte for the offense of misdemeanor assault, for which he is ordered to appear by June 7th in Gallatin County Justice Court. At this time, the case has been referred to the Gallatin County Attorney's Office for prosecution. At this time, I want to address my campaign contribution to Greg Gianforte back in March when he announced his candidacy for U.S. Congress. I apologize for not mentioning this at my news conference last night. The reason it never crossed my mind was that we were busy investigating this incident. The contribution made in March has absolutely nothing to do with my duties and responsibilities as the Gallatin County Sheriff or this investigation. There have also been questions and concerns that because of the contribution, there may be a conflict of interest and another agency should have investigated. I respectfully disagree. The citizens of Gallatin County elected me to do a job, and this incident occurred in our county, and this was our responsibility to investigate. So now we will go ahead. I'm going to let you know I'm not going to answer questions about specific details of the incident. I will only answer questions about the statement that I just made. So go ahead. How well do you know Mr. Gianforte? That has nothing to do with this investigation. Well, I think it does because you were talking about this question about conflict of interest, so that's the reason why I'm asking. How well do you know Mr. Gianforte? Not very well. Have you had any interactions with him on a personal basis? Yes. What kind? Again, I'm not going to talk about that. It has nothing to do with the incident. But again, it does because you mentioned that it was a conflict of interest. Go ahead. Have you ever been called in response to Mr. Gianforte before or been called to his residence? Not that I'm aware of, no. I just want to clarify. So the only time your officers have spoken to Mr. Gianforte directly was at the scene. There was no other follow-up conversations with him after the fact? That's correct. And is it normal course of procedure for someone who's maybe a suspect in an assault to be let go from the scene of a crime like that? I mean, if this had happened at a bar or a grocery store, would the person who was a suspect be allowed to just go home? So he was not under arrest. He was not in custody at that time. The deputies were busy dealing with the other five people that were there, and that's when Mr. Gianforte left. And are you still seeking to get another interview from him or any additional information from him at this point? No, he has an attorney. 
Was Marty Lambert involved in the charging of Gene Forte? Uh, we did have conversations with the county attorney, yes. And can you tell us anything about those conversations? No, just that we were we were explaining to him the situation and uh, where we were at and just just really communicating, that's all. Yes? Yeah. Does Gene Forte have any priors that you know of? I am not aware of that. If Gene Forte it, uh, has to go to jail for this fine and is elected governor, what will happen? I uh, mean congressman. Uh, sorry. No, okay. Uh, if he's ordered to go to jail by the judge? Yes. Then I would guess that that judge expects him to go to jail. Another question. You talked about the statute for what would make this aggravated assault as opposed to a regular assault. You talked about this idea that the victim would have reasonable apprehension of serious bodily harm. That sounds like it's sort of in the eye of the victim. Did the victim in this case suggest more difficult or more uh, intense charges? Did he, did he suggest anything about fear for his life, or, or was that part of the conversation with the victim, or whether he thought these charges should be more severe? No, he did not. Was it discussed with him? I mean, was the victim, I guess what I'm asking is, the victim who's not from Montana, was he aware that the ball was sort of in his court? to say what level this charge might be? I have not looked at the transcript from the detectives, but I know that they had a lengthy interview with him. How quickly did he, uh, did Mr. Jim Porte invoke his uh, right to an attorney? Uh, and, I, will, okay. I, uh, I will tell you that uh, during our interviews with the witnesses was when uh, his attorney contacted me directly. So there was no... Trying to figure out the amount of time between the time that his attorney contacted you and the time of the incident, and how quickly uh, 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 sheriff's deputies arrived on the scene. I don't have the time as far. I, I know that it was quick that the deputies arrived on the scene quickly. I don't have the exact time. I'm sorry. Um, and your your follow up question about Mr. Gianforte was what? I'm sorry. Uh, again, you know, the, the, the amount of time. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I believe, I don't know the exact amount of time, but it was hours. Be before the attorney called and the incident, it was hours? Correct. So why was there no interview between them? Because we were busy taking care of the witnesses and the victim and, and, and interviewing those people. But at that point, you knew that he was the suspect in this uh, incident, wasn't he? Yes. And now, routinely, you would ask a potential suspect to ask questions, right, and, and perhaps even detain him. Was he ever detained? No. Why not? Because he left the scene, and our deputies were busy taking care of him and talking to the witnesses. Well, uh, and the suspect. why was the why were the deputies not concerned about making sure that a person, a suspect, was in custody or at least kept on the premises so he did not flee? Isn't that the usual procedure? No, it's not. We it's have not? to find out all of the story. We have to talk to everyone involved. We find out everything. And the reason why we didn't go and talk to him is because we have to conduct the investigation. So how quickly yeah, before he talk. left and, and the arrival of the uh, deputies? Can I finish this? I'm sorry, go ahead. It's okay. So we have, we have to conduct the investigation. The way that we do things here in Gallatin County is we're going to talk to the witnesses and the suspect to try and, or the, uh, the victim to try and get that side of the story. And then we are going to talk to the suspect unless we feel as though the suspect is a threat. Go ahead. Were, were any injuries documented on the victims, such as bruising, abrasions, uh, sprained arm? Uh, what can you speak to as far as level of injury? We, uh, we have done a release with the hospital. We have not we have not been provided with that information yet. I just do know that uh, through the communication with the victim and our detectives that uh, he was not seriously injured. Again, Sheriff, how much time before he left? Go ahead. Sure. There, there's been an audio release of this incident that's been made public. Several of the, the, the witnesses have made sort of their account of this public. Mr. Gianforte's campaign spokesperson has made an account public of, of, of their view of how this all went down. Uh, there's a lot of discrepancy between the Gianforte campaign account and those other two accounts. Do you see the same discrepancy in their testimony, their interviews with you? So those are the details that I told you that I would not discuss, and that, that will be taken care of in the court of law. I know you started off kind of saying about your, your um, for the campaign for Gene Forte and how you contributed some. Are you worried that people um, 
in here in Gallatin County and all over are worried about that campaign contribution at all? Uh, worried, it, worried isn't a isn't the word that I would use. Um, I just wanted to make sure that the people of Gallatin County understood what happened, and that I am here to tell you that it had absolutely nothing to do with this investigation or my role as sheriff. Uh, who is Mr. Uh, I don't know if I can release that. Or what was the motivation for your campaign contribution? Are there specific uh, platform planks in GN4D's campaign that you support? Yeah, that doesn't have anything to do with the incident yesterday. If any new evidence comes to light, if you learn anything, anything new through interviews, could you see new charges being issued? Uh, that's why, the, in our opinion, the case is not closed. If there's further information that's brought to us, obviously we will do the exact same thing as we did yesterday, and we will uh, investigate any and all information that's provided to us. Sir, do you often give money to candidates for office, or was this contribution given to G4 because of a personal relationship? Again, that doesn't, that has nothing to do with it. Yes, sir, it does. It does. It does. It does. Sheriff, did you ever entertain a felony in this case? Uh, with the information that we investigated and all of the evidence and the statements, no. 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 Sir, a fast follow-up. If the, the contribution is just not related, then why did you feel compelled to mention it last night in the hours after this happened? Because it was out on social media, and um, you know, obviously people have concerns about that. Sure. I wanted to make sure that that was clarified. So why'd you give money? Go ahead. Um, just because Mr. Jim Portman does live in Gallatin County and you're the sheriff in Gallatin County, did you ever think when you were making the contribution that it could have been seen as a conflict of interest, or is that not something that you're concerned about? Never. So again, Sheriff, how much time between the arrival of deputies and Mr. Jim Portman's departure was there? I don't know the exact time. I'm I mean, 15 minutes, an hour, I mean, a ballpark? I, all I was told was that it was a short time. Is a short time five minutes in your mind, or? Well, in Gallatin County, a short time could be five minutes, so, or 10 minutes. Mm -hmm. I just, I'm sorry, I don't have that. Um, did you clear Mr. Gianforte to leave the scene, or can you explain why the <coughs> charge was not uh, considered? I'm sorry. Sorry, was the, um, did you clear Mr. Gene Forte to leave the scene, or can you explain why uh, fleeing the scene charge is never considered? So, uh, there was no clearing of him. What happened was the deputies got busy with the witnesses and the victim, and they had already had an initial, uh, sp you know, spoke with Mr. Gene Forte initially. Uh, when they got busy and they came back, uh, he was gone. And he never said that he was the accused, basically, during that interview? And your deputies did not ascertain that it was Mr. Gianforte who might have been a part of the scuffle? No, our, our deputies knew that he was the suspect. Okay, so why then did he leave or was allowed to leave? Because he wasn't in custody. But again, if you wanted to talk with him, why wasn't he detained there or told to stay until a more definitive uh, determination yeah. was, was done to see whether or not you wanted to talk with him a little bit more? Yeah, I've already I'm sorry, what was the answer to it? The answer was because the deputies were busy interviewing the witnesses and the victim. So that's all I have, and uh, thanks for your patience. Did you vote for Gianforte? 